summer, and we're looking forward to a great year. Um, first, um, Mr. Bingham cannot be with us tonight. He was out of town and could not get it changed. So um, he sends his regrets. Um, Mr. Giles has agreed to sit in as vice chair tonight. Uh, that being said, I'll turn over the invocation and pledge of allegiance to Mr. Giles. Two bow our hats, please. Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for this day and thank you for this time we have. Lord, we thank you for all good things going on in our district. We just pray that you continue to just give us favor in our district, all our teachers, our administrators, our students, Lord. Uh, and mainly we just ask that you uh, lead God and direct us in the decisions that we make and we always keep uh, the students in line with all those decisions. Uh, and we just uh, thank you, Lord, for all the good things that you bestow upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stand the face of flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next we have consent agenda, approval of the agenda, approval of the amendments from the June 16th. 2016 budget hearing and regular board meeting. If no objections, agenda consent agenda will stand approved. Next, we have unfinished business, which we have no unfinished business, so we'll move on to new business. And I'll turn that over the approval of revision of the 2016-17 uh, school calendar. Over to Dr. James. Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair, we'd ask the board to approve this. We give you a little bit of information, but. There's more to our calendar. In fact, that this year, um, the State Department of Education has set a testing window for the school district. There will be uh, a window of time that will have to fall within 30, probably the last 30 days of school. Each district will set those dates. Um, we had talked to the board and requested that we originally set March 23rd and 24th as in service day. Uh, what we would, would like in light of uh, the other information that we have here is that we move those two in-service days to June 1st and 2nd. Uh, that will do several different things to us. It will give us more instructional days, obviously, and then beyond that, it prevents us from testing when we come back right from spring break. So uh, my recommendation is that the board would approve these changes. Thank you, Dr. Jones. I'll entertain a motion. Ms. Brown. I'll make a motion to approve the provisions to the school calendar for 2016-2017. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Kessler. All in favor say aye. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, Dr. James, I don't know if y'all have thought about this hard in advance or whatever, but with the in-service being like the first and second, maybe this would be a question, Jane, you could probably jump in and answer. When are the graduations going to be, the high school for everyone in BC? What we're, what we're looking at there, Beth, is that we can do those graduations on either of those days or both of those days. If we want to do one school, there was some talk, and that's one thing that we'll bring to the board before we set it firm. If we wanted to do both at like 8 o'clock in the morning, we could do a Thursday and Friday, or we could do uh, 8 and 10, like we were 8, 30 and 10, whatever it was, like we've done in the past on each one of those days. So we had not set that day, but it would be one of those two days. We would not bring kids back on Monday. Well, I just, we get that space <coughs> way unforeseen, thousand-year flood again. And I appreciate your um, foresight in that, because I know historically we've graduated both high schools on the same day, but graduation is a really, really huge day, and, 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 and I hate for the board to be rushing from one place to the other and holding up people and and, and if we're going to have outside graduation at either one of the high schools you've got to let those people start a day i mean i think we've started 32 well, years now and i mean it's beautiful and we love it but we, we if we're going to have anybody doing outdoors we need to let start them at 8 a.m so if it's two different days that's fine well, so, evening. Evening. Or evening. Or evening. well the uh, thing yeah, about Ms. the Ms. evening I'm, I'm the principal is considering that he's going to form a committee He's going to form a committee to uh, look at that, and he's considering evenings or uh, graduations. Well, the one thing about evening graduations is the fact that you almost always have to set up two venues because you you 
can expect rain that time of year, thunderstorms and all as it starts to heat up. The later in the day it gets, the more likely you are to have a thunderstorm. And that's one of the issues with people choosing a venue like we've rented. And quite honestly, once I get directly from the board, airport in D.C. will break away at their own sites like D.C. did this past year because it's become economically impractical to rent the facilities from the university. So uh, as a recommendation to the board, and ultimately we'll follow the board directly, but as a recommendation, I would rather see them do it in two morning sessions than, than an evening session because they're just there's too much opportunity for a problem with the weather. The later it gets in the day, the more there is a chance for weather. Um, and, and you're going to set up an inside and outside venue and print tickets and all those things even when you don't need them. So, um, but you're right, Ms. Brown. At 10 o'clock, it's already hot. There's no question about that. Well, I feel just also, before you bring that to the board, I know you will get, obviously, <coughs> The input of, of both high school principals because that that is their school and you know I think they're probably the most in touch with their communities and I do know even if you had to do an evening one like what Cindy suggested I believe we um, have a local very large very generous local church that had offered to be the backup location to, with, that would take little to no setup you know so I mean just I know you're thinking about all those issues but before we approve the calendar I wanted to make sure to throw the graduation one in there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Next, we have the back to school update, enrollment and staffing, and we have Chief Instructional Officer. Good evening, Ms. Lugan and members of the board. We have a packet in front of you with our enrollments at this point in time. Of course, this is a moving target. It has moved as late as 5.58 today. So uh, Mr. Hant just put a nice synopsis together, and at the bottom you see our enrollment as of today is 89.62. That includes our three and four-year-old children. So we will look at each school. I would like to go ahead and make some comments up front. Some of the numbers may alarm you when you get to certain schools. And the reasons we haven't made any movement at this point in time, each year, as you're aware, we have a power school rollover. Well, this year we had a power school rollover and an upgrade, which didn't take place until July 30th. So in addition to the rollover and the upgrade, and we have some new office staff members, we decided we would hold off one week to be ca proceed with caution to make sure we were making the right moves. For example, at BC number one, we have a new administration as well as a new office staff power school person. So we wanted to give that school time to stabilize and make sure that the numbers were accurate. I met with Mr. Dickey and his staff today and they actually were calling. You'll see they have about 79, 80 first graders enrolled. They were actually calling all those kids to make sure they were gonna be here. So there was some movement that we probably will have to make, but that won't take place until Monday. So I'll bring your attention to BC number one. You'll look at first and second grade. First grade is way higher than we want it to be. We have capped BC number one's first and second grade. Those students are now being enrolled at, sec at Pineview Elementary. If these numbers hold, we have a contention plan in place where we can potentially add a teacher at BC number one. There is a portable there that's being used for response to intervention. Those folks would have to go on a cart, but Mr. Eisenhower and his staff can set it up as a classroom. Congaree Elementary at 558, they had 119 fourth graders, so their current ratio is not 24.2, 24 it's actually 23.8. Seawick, we're really ecstatic about our CD4 numbers there. We only need 10 more students to cap our CD4 classes, which is really good at this point in time and we feel like we'll get those children and you see where they stand and of course our kindergarten and first grade classes at that school are a moving target they always go up but that's where we are at this point in time davis has a unique situation going on at kindergarten right now 
But if you look at their second grade, those numbers are inching up. Davis um, has a um, second grade position that it needs to fill. If the kindergarten doesn't make, we will move a teacher within that school to, to second grade, and then that will give us a 1.0 FTE to use elsewhere. Does that make sense? So a teacher wouldn't have to leave Davis, we'll just have a 1.0 FTE if the numbers don't include Chris. Time view. Mr. Hinton uh, has some school choice from some other sites that we're going to release to uh, increase Pineview because, of course, Pineview and Springdale are non-Title I, and we have to have them a little higher than the other schools. But uh, Pineview's numbers will also be helped by the kids that we're sending from first and second grade from BC number one. Saluda River is one that we are monitoring. You can see those kindergarten numbers there are lower than expected. And so that is one that we're closely monitoring. And there may have to be movement there in the event that we will need a teacher elsewhere. Springdale, Mr. Hinton is getting ready to release school choice. This would be children who have never been enrolled in Lexington School District 2. So uh, once these numbers stabilize for us on Monday, he will release those numbers. And so Springdale's numbers are going to go up. Taylor. They're pretty stable. Wood. We are monitoring fifth grade. Mr. Frierson calls me every other day or sends me an email on the days he doesn't call. Uh, we're looking at his fifth grade. That's a little too close for comfort for us. And so uh, if we have to make movement, that is an area where we would make movement, would at fifth grade. Busby, the eighth grade, don't let it alarm you at this point in time. Um, we know what that looks like. I met with Dr. Brooks and his staff today. Um, and also, there are some kids who are on the school choice list to uh, maybe look at some other sites. So we think we can give Busby some relief as well. Ma'am? You said that you were looking to give Busby some relief? At the 28 to 1? Yes, you mean as an additional teacher? Potentially, if the kids who want school choice, we can offer them elsewhere. Okay, I, I, that's what I heard, and that's what I was thinking. That's the small school we have in, in the district, and you know, we were told, and I've said this before, and I know that you get tired of hearing it, but we were told by past administration, past past administration, that you would grow us because it was built for 600. Correct. We have had nothing close to that. Yes, ma'am. And if it's the will of the board, we certainly will have a teacher. <coughs> We've got out some students like we've been told for 10, 12 years. Part of the issue with Kessler is the school choice thing. And uh, I do think that's one of the things that the board's going to have to spend some, some time talking about because as long as there's a policy to allow folks to choose in their openings at other schools, Jim doesn't have any choice except to honor. Now, I've, I've heard what you've been told about growth at Busby, and uh, I'll go out as the president of the administration and tell you that I'll guarantee you that a year from now you won't have this problem. Doc Brooks and the folks over there have done a phenomenal job this summer and have drawn some kids in that have been on choice other places to be there. So, I do expect it to grow, and it is a smaller school, but as far as Mr. Hinton is right now, as long as we're going to hold firm to this school choice thing, and folks don't realize that Dr. Brooks has got something different going on as far as the art. Um, we could add a teacher to keep them there, but I guess the short, long and short of it is we could put a teacher there and reduce that number but we'll have to not follow the school choice policy. Um, and I guess just for my two cents worth, I, sometimes that hurts our schools, um, allowing that. 
Um, I have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so the bottom numbers, the SC, SC, PAIR, and RTF, I already said I know what RTF stands for, and PAIR. What's SC, SC? Oh, self-contained, special ed. Okay, and so are those students housed at Busby? They're or housed at Busby, and they are mainstreamed into the regular classrooms. Okay, and so are their numbers, those 18 counted in these 28 to 1 and stuff No, like ma'am. But they are mainstreamed, so. Right. Yeah, what you see here is just the self-contained kids are extracted. They're pulled out. So when they're so mainstreamed, I can't. It would increase these numbers, yes, ma'am. Okay, and then my other question then, so the RTF people, they people, yeah. and I know where they are. Right. But their home school is Busby. Why are they under mm -hmm. Busby's, like, page? You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I've noticed RTF. Like each school has some RTF people, and I know is that their home school? That would be their home school, but of course they are never on site at those schools. But they're included in the enrollment there. A couple of years ago, we had to go to this model because the state said they weren't going to let the RTS run their own schools. So those kids now are listening to two students, and they have to, we have to enroll them in the school. So they're actually being assigned to Busby. Two. Um, in power school, but they actually get their instruction at the RTF, and we have teachers and an administrator over there that carry out the instruction. So when their when their test scores are counted, are they counted on Busby? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. No, it's district wise. It's district. It's just it's district. district. It's not school, it's, but it's district. Okay, so Busby doesn't have necessarily their test scores counted there. It's the district. Car. Yeah, it's the district that's in fact. No. How many uh, self-contained uh, teachers do we have per, you know, the numbers we do in the separate, you know, like the former has 23 self-contained kids, how many teachers do we have, or? Lisa, do you know those numbers off the top of your head? Um, for which school? So has got 23 students self-contained. How many self-contained Yeah, four. Three. They got three. What about say Pine Ridge? One. 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 What about the other two? Um, Busby has three, and Northside has two. Two. Northside has two. Why does uh, <coughs> Former's got the most kids? They have three. We got three at where is it? Busby. Why don't we try to get the numbers of self-contained teachers up? Where it wouldn't be such a, see what I'm saying? When you've got more kids, you need more, more, more help. And yeah, I know those teachers need a lot of help. That's why they're uh, Swiss. I mean, is there any way we could get some of these to be a little bit more? I mean, Pine Ridge has got 15 and one teacher. That's that's just a little bit low to me, and I don't even have to do that. I, but I know what they put up with, and I know what the trials they have with those kids and is there any way we can try to make this a little bit more evenly manageable amongst the four schools as far as where the programs are placed well i mean just you know the numbers the, the kids the teachers, and, the, and the teachers student ratio with these kids i mean you got 15 to 1 here and you got 3 to 23 but you have 3 to 18 i mean it's just it depends. Right. It seems. Yes. It's it's some of the category of classes. Well, handicapped condition makes a difference. Well, like I said, I just wanted to be, yeah. you know, I, I I know what kind of trials and tribulations those guys and girls put up with. Right. Those are, that's a tough thing to do, and let's make sure we get them enough help in the classroom. And I will say, each middle school, the nice thing is, each middle school has their own learning disability supplement program, mm -hmm. so those kids don't have right. to go school so the numbers that those larger numbers are the, we have more learning as they work this. But each middle school has their own program. So that is evenly distributed as far as that part. I understand but like I said just no, I, I, Yeah, that's what I'm just trying to okay. get some help where it may be needed. I think my mic went out but full the next school is Fulmer. Fulmer has Northside, we are uh, monitoring sixth grade at Northside. Pine 
Ridge, you'll see that Pine Ridge looks a little low at seventh grade. Well, and what's not reflected here is we had to move the Spanish teacher from North I mean, from Pine Ridge to Air Force within the last week because we could not find a Spanish teacher for Air Force. And so in terms of giving the kids the credit they needed, we had to make a hard decision about whether we kept that Spanish teacher at Pine Ridge or sent it to Air Force so the kids could get their credits. And so they need to do some shifting because they have lost an FTE in here. And so that's why their numbers look a little low, but it doesn't account for the fact that they've lost the Spanish teacher. <laughs> Airport, they currently have 1,348 students. They have 84 certified teachers. That is including all content areas, ROTC, world languages, so forth and so on. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I'll just talk really loud. Okay. Um, <coughs> I mean, I heard what you said on that for Pine Ridge about the Spanish teacher, but I thought a core teacher, when y'all give us those numbers, are just math, social studies, science, English, they, they, and not electives. Correct. It is a, we do typically give you elective and core, but I'm saying if they don't replace that elective, that 0.5, they could do something different with this core to make this number more equitable with the other kids. Oh. And that gives us wiggle room to help another school. Does that make sense? It does. <laughs> I think they cut Cindy. All <laughs> 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 yeah, all right. yeah. So airport and then BC high schools. Um, I know every year we have a question about scheduling. I can assure you that Dr. James, myself, we have looked at the high school schedules at least three times this summer, including today. We do have a few outliers, but um, we had scheduled pickup today at airport and scheduled pickup on Tuesday and Wednesday, I believe, at BC High School. Now, there are some classes that will probably be collapsed because of low numbers at this point in time, but I can assure you that our high school numbers are probably the best that they've been since I've been in this role. And it's because Dr. James and I have sat side by side and, and scrubbed the airport high school and BC High School. Now, when the final thing rolls out, there will probably be a few classes with low numbers, but they'll take into consideration those are your upper level K classes where you, you know, the higher the kids go, the less amount of kids that actually take those courses. So do keep that in mind. And at this time, I will entertain any questions that you have about enrollment. This, this overall, how has the uh, district-wide enrollment compared to past years? Only pretty stable. Stable. Thank you. It's almost exactly what 135 and today number one. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you again. All right. Um, next, we have executive session. Madam Chair, I make a motion the board trustees in a closed session for the following uh, consideration of personal appointments and resignations, discussion of property matters, consideration of requests for out of district tuition installment payments, and consideration of requests for out of district tuition reduction. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Oh, Ms. Kessler, all in favor say aye. 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 Now in executive session. Not only is it a good thing, but it's a good thing. 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 It's a good th